What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's good, people? What's up? And I'm back. It's me, L Teddy27 again, and I'm back, y'all. And I am here. You know, these are my Angry Teacher Chronicles. And we're here for another review. This is going to be a retro review for The Wire Season 1, Episode 8. And this is um, entitled Lessons. So much happened. So much happened. Let's get right into it. McNulty um, and his two boys are out at the market shopping and stuff. He sees uh, Stringer come in. He has his uh, boys trained to play this little um, spying game that they do called Front and Follow. Well, one goes in the front of the person and one goes behind the person so that way the person in front I guess can keep them you know at a certain speed so the other person behind them can keep up and follow and listen to what's being said anyway but they spying on Stringer Bell to see what they can get long story short they end up getting the license plate number off of Stringer Bell's car and so um they uh, but anyway, they do it so well. This child, McNulty done lost his kids. He ended up talking to mall security. I mean, to the security down to the marketplace, trying to find his kids. A mess. A mess. Just a mess. Down um down to the office in the basement. Free Makima and Prez are down there listening to some chats. And they're discussing the fact that, okay, we had these two pay phones down in the low rises that just went out all at one time. It's not coincident. And so that means that now they're calculating. Once they see that we're on their path, they are smart enough to say, okay, let's not do that no more. And let's um, make adjustments. So, um, yeah, they're learning that, you know... Um, that um, Avon and his crew, they, they always are willing to adapt and try to stay ahead of the game. Carver and Herc are in the other room, supposedly studying for the sergeant test. Sergeant is over, not sergeant, Carver is over there taking it seriously. Now, y'all pay very close attention to this, okay? This is going to be all the way until the very last episode of this show. Carver and his... And his um, desire to move up in the police force. You will go, you're going to see this all the way through to the very last episode. Herc is just being strung along because that's Carver's boy. Herc just want to go out there and beat some people up. And be the quintessential um, profiling racist white ass um, police officer. I'm just saying. I said it. Anyway, so um, Carver's um, studying real hard. Herc ain't studying at all. Prez goes in there and tells them, y'all need to go and follow uh, the boys down there, the low riders, so we can see how they communicate and how they use the phone. Baby, they looked up at Prez like, bitch, who the fuck? Who are you talking to? Like you got stripes around here? Like you bossing somebody around and so they basically brush her off like he's like well, you know i can't go because i'm in the office exactly exactly so sit your ass down somewhere and leave us the fuck alone five seconds later kima come in there kima saying i need y'all to go and check out the mopes down there and the low rise to see how they communicate and they all like okay well we're gonna go nobody respects you press nobody respects you so then i mean because he ain't shit. i mean just be honest so then we see Weebay, Stink, and some other dude. They break into Omar's house. They just, you know, ransack his house, so forth and so on. Now, y'all know Omar is always five to ten steps ahead of the game. While Omar is not there, because Omar is just across, um, like, across the courtyard or across the um, street, watching this all go down. He's at the apartment of the chick. Remember the little crackhead uh, chick, you know? Um, Basa chick who had the son He's at the little Basa chick house Watching out the window Watching them ransack his um, house And then they came out and they um, They set his um, van on fire 
Anyway, um, so he's watching it all go down. He knows who's responsible. He knows it's Weave, Stink, Stink, and the other boy. I don't know the other boy's name. McNulty is, uh, we see McNulty, he's going around trying to get as much information as he can on that license plate number that he got uh, from his boys on, um, on um, Stringer. So he's at the uh, computer looking up the license plate to see where, you know, where it's registered to and so forth. He's talking to Buck about how he done trained his boys to do this whole um, um, front and follow spy trick or game or whatever they have and say they love it. They did seem real excited about it. Down to Wallace's house, I mean, we got a tragic scene still over here at Wallace's house. Wallace is out of it. Wallace is and what it seems to me is, is that Wallace, Wallace may be full out strung out now. Like Wallace, I don't want to give it up so I'm acting like I don't know. Okay. But Wallace Done, went through all the money. He done snorted up all the money that he had that um, Avon them gave him. Wallace ain't been back to the pit, to the low rises because he's still spooked by this whole situation. So one of the kids that he take care of come in there and ask him about the math homework. Wake him up and ask him about this math homework. So he's trying to help them out. And so Pooh comes up in the middle of all this, Pooh say, hey, we need to go down. We got to go to work. We got to get on the block. Wallace ain't here for it. Wallace ain't going to preach. Say, Pooh say, listen, I can't keep, um, you know, covering for you. Eventually, D going to want to see you. And going to wonder why the fuck you ain't down in the, you know, working. Wallace say, I'm not. I'm going to go when I want to go. I, ain't, I don't feel it. I'm not going right now. He say, but let me hold $10. Pooh say, man, we can't keep doing it. I'll pay you. So Wallace say, I'll pay you back. He say, how the fuck you going to pay me back? You ain't even working. You ain't been on the block. How you going to pay me back? Pay me back with what money? Child. Pooh, give him the $10. Now, the reason I say Wallace might be a whole ass strung out is because we know Wallace has now been started to get the tendencies of a baser, a crackhead. Every time you see them, they try to borrow some more money. Why? So they can get their next hit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, after Poot leave, uh, Wallace talks to the... the, 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 the I, listen, I know this is going to come out so wrong. Hold on, let me take a swig. I honestly couldn't tell if the kid was a boy or a girl. It was, the, the child was very androgynous. Don't tell me nothing about no high-pitched high pitch voice because little boys, before they voice change, have high-pitched voices too. So I don't know if it was a boy or a girl. The child was very androgynous. Anyway, the child ended up... Um, Poo, not Poo, Wallace gave him this problem that involved the count. And the situation if he was on the block. Child figured it out like that. He was like, how the fuck you can keep up with the count with all that I gave you, but you can't figure out this math problem. I was with you on that, Wallace. I was with you. But yeah, Poop gave him the $10. Anyway, Freeman and Kima and Sidney are listening to taps. And they hear Stringer talking about they finna make a drop. And so they're talking about going to intercept this drop. And so forth, and seeing how they could, um, you know, maybe come up on some drugs. Okay. Pooh then goes down and talks to D. He's talking to D about Wallace and the fact that you know that's his boy, and he's he, he's worried about his boy. He knows the conditions that Wallace lives in. He knows Wallace cannot afford. To not be working on the block. Hell, they ain't even got electricity for real. Because they stringing a whole electric cord. All the way from like a whole building over. Just to get electricity in that house. Got this old extension cord. Coming from across the way. And he trying to support 8,000 kids. Just a mess. And also, I think Poot know. That Wallace might be a little strung out. Or maybe he suspects. Anyway, D said, man, if he don't want to work, he ain't got to come work. It don't even matter, man. That's the game. If he don't want to work, he ain't got to come work. Poot said, listen, I need you to talk to him. So D said, all right. Because Poot, that's his boy. 
So D said, tell them to come talk to me. Then we see um, Sidnor and Hurt. They're up there on top of the roof. Remember, like we said, what they're trying to figure out is how are these guys communicating if it ain't no pay phones in the low rises? So how are they communicating with each other? So they're trying to, you know, get um, pictures and surveillance and figure that out. Down in the low rises, we see Weebay and Stink come, come pick up D. And they go out for a ride or whatever. So D leaves Poot in charge while he's um, out with Weebay and Stink and the other boy. Same boy from earlier with the little wicks or dreads or whatever. Kima and Carver finally um, are down there trying to pull off this um, intercept of the drop off. And, you know, they pulled over this um, Crown Royal Chrysler Town. One of those, you know, um, government official um, cars. You know what I'm saying? And. They follow it. They say, no, we're not going to pull it over now. We're going to follow it at first. And so they follow it for a little bit. Then they cut away to Weebay, Stink, D, and the other guy. Who, the more I look at him, the more he's strikingly attractive. The more he's strikingly attractive. A little high yellow little something. Anyway, they down there um, having lunch at this spot. Shooting the shit, talking business a little bit, and talking about how... You know, they were congratulating Stink because Stink just got this new territory. All he got to do now is take out some dude named Ska who own, who has the territory now. Take him out and his boys and that's going to become Stink area that he um, has for um, Avon's whole cartel. And he's going to get, you know, a certain percentage of everything that comes into that part. So, um, and they about to start that, you know, the next, they, I think they're supposed to do that the next day. So they're going that night they planned on having this big party at Weebay House for Stink. So they eat a lunch and just shooting the shit and talking um all about it. During that conversation, D tells them about how Orlando told him about some connect he had from New Orleans and how he wanted to, you know, maybe try to serve a little bit on the side down to the low rises to make a little come up for himself. And so Weebay and um Stinking them say you need to run that by your uncle before you do that. Now, in my mind, in my mind, I feel like Temptations um style of night. In my mind, in my mind, I was thinking, now you got to be about the dumbest bitch on earth if you would think that you could just let slip out that Orlando was looking to sell his own drugs and have his own connect and that wasn't gonna get back to your uncle before you had a chance to get it to your uncle. You think we may instinct but I'm gonna tell them that. Whatever. Anyway, Kim and Carver, they pull over the, the car. Uh that they are uh, from the drop off. Child the driver is the same driver that Daniels was talking to at that high high price five hundred dollar plate fundraiser. That they was having, that um, was talking about, boy, I um, robbed this house. If I could, I'd do this, that, and the third. And Daniels let him know, I'm a cop. And he was like, yeah. Turns out, he's the driver for none other than Clay Davis. State Senator Clay Davis. Okay. She, Clay Davis. That Clay Davis. If y'all don't know what I mean when I say she, you don't know nothing about the why. Anyway, they confiscate a boatload of money off him, and they arrest him. We next see McNulty following up on that information. So now he's going out to he done went out to um, surveil the house that is um, on the registration for the license plate. Um, Carver, he got a page from Carver and Kima saying, "Come back to the um, come back down to the office." So instead of going down to the basement office, they go up to the police station. Police station. Daniels meets them there because they don't page Daniel too. Daniels too. So they Carver and Kima tell Daniels everything that they got, the arrest, what they found out, this, that, the third. Daniels say, they say what we're gonna do with the money. Daniels says, listen, this is what we'll do. We may be able to let him go, but 
we got to keep the money and that way in order for him to get the money back we give him a receipt for the money in order to get the money back we gonna he's gonna have to show where and how he got that money and that way we can get him down Ooh, excuse me I'm sorry y'all and that way we can get him you know with this whole drug cartel all of the intricate nuances of police work I, you know I'm, I'm not a criminal justice major I don't I'm not you know well versed on all of those things that are involved but I'm sure some lawyers and criminal justice people that are in the chat or watching the video know what I'm talking about anyway next thing you know Air Pops the major well um, McNulty calls him the angel of death it's the major for the IID department, and I, I guess it's internal investigations department. Um, and that's the guy who you know, if you got internal investigation, that means uh, that, that's that's bad business. That means you under investigation. That's just like um, in teaching back in my home district, we used to call, it wasn't called internal affairs or internal investigation, it was called the Office of Professional Standards or OPS. You ain't wanna hear from OPS. Anyway, um, we then see Orlando goes in to see Avon and Stringer. Baby, they done found out at oh, Avon goes off old, new, past, present, beginning, and end. They hem him up a little bit, beat him up, and throw him out. You know, tell him, listen, if you need the extra money, you could have told me and not try to, you know, um, do some, you know, sideways, under the cover shit. They throw him out and kind of embarrass him a little bit in front of the little scrippers who laughing at him and stuff and throw him out the office. But the thing about it is Avon and Stringer needs Orlando because Orlando is the clean name that they got on this liquor license. And in order for them to keep this uh, money filtering and funneling and getting cleaned up through the script club, they need Orlando whose name is on the liquor license. So you, can, you just can't say, oh, I'm going to go and do away with Orlando and kill him off. You need him. So I'm going to see how that's going to play out. Because after a while, Orlando might say, well, fuck this. I ain't dealing with y'all no more. And how that's going to play out? Because now y'all going to have to find a whole other person to get, you know, on this liquor license. Or to have a liquor license to have this um, strip club. Anyway, down back to the police station. Deputy Burrell done called Daniels in his office with the major from IID. Baby, they are going in on Daniels. Because, see, what's not going to happen is you're not just going to start pulling over and arresting people connected to people in positions of power. Because while you might have tried to one-up that dude, Daniels, when you was down there to the little fundraiser and make him shake, baby, he knows people. And he, the people he know obviously knew the people that can get you to shake, Daniels. And so Burrell went in on Daniels and told him you ain't got shit to arrest him for he ain't did nothing he ain't got no drugs you ain't have no reason to arrest him but, but be, besides the fact you said he had a lot of money in his car let him go give him his fucking money back and keep it moving then he said as a matter of fact I got all this extra shit all of these wiretaps all these surveillances all this cloning the pages and y'all ain't produced a goddamn thing for me yet. Fuck you and fuck your life. We shutting this shit down by the end of next week. And y'all, whatever arrest y'all need to have, that shit better shake down by the end of the following week. And we gonna be done with this bullshit. I was like, oh. Meanwhile, down in the other part of the uh, police station, they end up having to give the money back and um, let the guy go. McNulty and Kima are 38 hot. Daniels goes, is leaving. McNulty goes out there and goes in on Daniels. Now, see, this further proves my point. I'm going to make this point a little bit in just a few minutes. But McNulty immediately goes into Daniel and just disrespects Daniel. It's completely disrespectful. Completely insubordinate. Completely beyond the scope of what a subordinate should be doing with their superior or and or supervisor. He didn't even try to even hear what Daniels had to say. He doesn't even, which means that he doesn't even know how Daniels has, from the beginning of the case, been fighting for him over and over and over again. 
but he's completely disrespectful. He's completely out of pocket. And then so much as alludes to Daniels um, that Burrell must know a secret about Daniels. And that's why Daniels have to go in back stairs to go see Burrell because Daniels must be doing something um, wrong or nefarious or underhanded. Um, just all this kind of... Um, he was very disrespectful. Just disre damn respectful. But hold that. Anyway. Because uh, McNulty said, what does Daniel have over you? And he said, rank. And that's it. Down to the party for Stink. Baby, they is partying. You got drinking. You got drugs. You got music. You got naked chicks. Horny ass man. It's going down. I'm sure there were women that were taken advantage of. And we'll see that in a little bit. I'm sure any and everything that you can imagine that goes down at a party like that went down. So they partying it up for stink. Um, Daniels is at home talking to his wife, drinking, commiserating about everything he got going on with Burrell in this case. Then we see down at Weebay House, they send... Um, D to go get alcohol. D come back with the alcohol. Magically, the whole party is over. I mean, shut the fuck down. Ain't nobody there. Ain't no DJs. Ain't no cleaning up. Ain't no nobody left over. Everybody gone. They sitting there watching TV like it was never a party going on. I don't know how the fuck a party in that fast, but I guess. So, um, D puts the, um, liquor down, goes over by, um, we bay Roman and say, we, uh, bae, who's this in the, um, it's so, well, listen, can I say, it's always so funny to me to hear people call we bay bay because in 2002, bay is not something that we call your significant other. You didn't hear people, I'm not saying nobody did, but that wasn't like a standard common term in most black people vernacular, calling your boo thing bay. That didn't come till after that. So calling Weebay Bay, and you hear all these dudes calling Weebay a Bay, it sounds so weird. Can I tell y'all how weird that sounds now in 2020? What it wasn't weird back in 2002 because we weren't saying Bay. It's just weird. I just wanted to say that. Anyway, he goes, Bay, who this is in here? So he said, Oh, that's one of the chicks from earlier. I, I bust her down. She died. Child, you go in there. She a whole ass dead. Just dead as a doornail. Dead, dead, dead. Dead. Um, Kim and McNulty Then we see them going down to the judge The judge done already got the memo That Burrell said he was shutting down their shit in a week So the judge wants the details So McNulty and Kima tell the judge all about um, Why um, Burrell is shutting down the case And so forth And everything with Daniels And all of that in the third And Clay Davis and his driver and everything The judge calls Burrell And says I know you the fuck lying I paid for 60 days of wiretaps. And I know they ain't did 60 days of wiretaps. I think we did about 40 because he had asked McDonald's and came up and they said about 40. He said, so until I get my 60 days of wiretaps, y'all ain't shut nothing down or I will find you in contempt of court. Guess they won't be shutting it down. McNulty then is following Stringer. Now Stringer gets in the car finally. Stringer catches the cab to the car, gets in the car, and drives off. Stringer, I mean, McNulty follows him. He's going down to community college. He's taking business classes so that he can, you know, better himself and, you know, be smarter. Doing Stringer Bell stuff. Stringer Bell was always a smart one. Anyway, Kima tells Daniels all this, um, cause Daniels says, I, I, it was, because, you know, Burrell, shit rains down here. So after Burrell got berated by the judge, you know Burrell had to call Daniels and go in on Daniels. And now Daniels got to go and find out how the fuck this shit happened again. So he asked Kima, did this come from the judge or did it come from McNulty? Kima says, this is not on me and McNulty. This is on the judge. This all came from the judge. He says, okay. Herc and Carver go to take this sergeant test. Carver is over there just trying so hard. Herc is just goofing off. Just being Herc. Stringer, and we find out, is running this copy center. 
and Stringer got some of the dope boys down there as his workers. And they're goofing off and trying to run it like they do on the block. And he's telling them, listen, I'm not running this shit like we on the fucking streets. We're running this as a legitimate business. I'm not here just to clean up the money. I want this to be a legitimate business. And he meant that. Can I say that I'm not an Idris Elba fan. And he's not as cute to me as everybody else finds him. But The Wire is to me where he was his most attractive. I will say that. Freeman and Kima. Oh, I'm sorry. We then see um, Stink and Weebay. Stink and Weebay, they go down to do the hit on this Scar character. They they mapping it out. They talking about it. This and the third. I'm gonna go this way. You gonna go? I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna go around the back. And I'm gonna hit him from the back. You hit him from the back, from the front. And we gonna team up and do it that way. We take him out easy and we gone. So Weebay get out the car and he goes all the way around the block to come meet him around the back. Stink finally gets out when he thinks Weebay's about to come up. And Stink is walking toward the Scar Guy. Before Stink can get to the Scar Guy, he walks past this doorway. And somebody say, hey. He turns and faces them. Bam, 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 bam. He, he got shot up and killed. Who was it? Omar. Weebay hear this? Weebay starts shooting at Omar. Omar starts shooting at Weebay. Omar get Weebay in the leg. Bam! Shoot Weebay in the leg. Omar get away. Well, actually, Omar ain't run. Omar just started whistling his Farmer in the Dale. The Farmer in the Dale. Hi, oh, the Dario. The Farmer in the Dale. You know, that's Omar shit. Weebay down there. So Weebay got to try and, you know, um, stumble his ass away from the crime scene before the goddamn police come. Because his ass can't even fucking um, walk. He got to hop and hobble his way on before the police get there a mess. But Omar got their ass. And um, like he said, if you going to um, come for the king, you better not miss. He told Weebay that. He said, hey, babe, if you going to come at the king, you better not miss. And child, got him. Omar wasn't here for it. Anyway, Freeman and Kima here, them talking on the wire that Omar done killed Stink. And so forth. And they know Stink was connected to a lot of their cases. And they was trying to build up a case for Stink. Because remember, they could have picked up Stink. Was it ep last episode or episode before last? When they when they got the guy, the bo little boy. The they could have got Stink then. And they didn't. They let him go because they were trying to build the case on Stink. Now they can't do that. Because Stink did. And Omar took him out. And Omar is their informant that's supposed to be working with them. A whole clusterfuck. So they said we got to call Omar in. We then see Avon meet up with his boys. He done found out about Stink. Avon said the bounty on Omar is up to $10,000. I'm just saying. Omar then comes in and he says what he know, um, says, I don't know nothing about um, Stink getting killed. I don't know nothing. I mean, I heard about Stink getting killed and we been getting shot, but I don't know nothing about it. I ain't do it. They know he lying. And they were just telling them, listen, you hurting our case, you hurting us. So, um, we then see, we're back at D's house. Stripper chick asked D, you know, she would say, I ain't heard from my friend, one of the other strippers, the one who died. And she been missing since last night, ain't nobody heard from her. She didn't even come to work to pick up a check today. What the fuck is going on? So, um... Um, D is like, listen, I don't know nothing about that. All I know is, um, I left and that was it. And, you know, they started talking back and forth with each other. It wasn't nothing too much. Bunk and McNulty, um, uh, Bunk is then talking to McNulty. McNulty needs a favor. McNulty needs Bunk to talk to one of the people to, um, talk to one of the, um, guys to put one of those murders that was supposed to be, I think, on Stink on one of the guys he has. And he needs Bunk to go talk to one of his um, fellow um, detectives in order to do that. And Bunk talks to the guy and gets him to do that. But the point that I want to make is, is this. When Bunk was talking to... No, I'm sorry. When McNulty was talking to Bunk about trying to get this other detective to you know, help him out. The way he was talking about Rawls is, was in a very fearful tone. 
He was very, I don't want to piss Rawls off. I got to get Rawls off my back. I can't do this, that, and the third. This attitude toward Rawls, who is white, is very different from his attitude toward Daniels, who's black. While he may can't stand Rawls, while Rawls gives him shit, he still knows how to toe the line. He still knows how to be respectful to Rawls, who has rank over him, and who happens to be white. But when it's Daniels, who is also his superior, and who's also been helping him out at every turn, he's completely and utterly disrespectful, which I would not let go of, and some people may not agree with me, proves to me that this whole thing between Rawls, I mean, between Daniels and McNulty is not just surface level. There's race involved there, and there's some racism involved there. I'm sorry. I just believe it. Y'all gonna have to prove to me otherwise. I'm not saying I can't be moved off of that, but I don't see how it's not. We can discuss that in the comment section. And I go about that in the comment section. Anyway, down to the bar. They go, you know, McNulty and Bunk always at the bar. Bunk sees some chick. He calls, he tells McNulty, listen, tell my wife I got a case and I'm going to be out late tonight. I lied for you. You lied for me. He say, okay. Kima take, um, talks to Freeman. We did see Kima talking to Freeman. She's kind of, um, she's kind of regretting because she feels like, did she do the wrong thing with the Omar situation and getting him to be their informant for the bird case? And did she move in too fast on the bird case? She's kind of saying that, you know, she's recalculating her steps and thinking maybe she may have done some stuff wrong. And Freeman is, reassures her and say, listen, this detective work is not a science. It's an art. It's not exact. Not always um, clean. And then they look at some of the um, stripper chicks that work down to Orlando to see well, which one of these do you think is, I think he said you could flip or something like that. But she picks out the chick that's messing with Dean. And she was like, it's something about the eyes. It's something about her face. It's something about the eyes. I can tell. Anyway, next thing we know. We see Omar Dow in front of um, across the street from the strip club, hiding, watching Orlando leave. Basically, he watching the strip club. He got eyes on Avon and all of them because he needs to know when uh, how they move. Finally, McNulty's dead ass sleep in the middle of the night. He get a call. It's the chick who Buck went to um, went to go fuck. Buck is at so McNulty has to go pick Buck up. Buck then got drunk as a skunk. Bunk done burned his clothes. Talk about some. I gotta get rid of all the trace evidence. He done burnt the lady his clothes in the lady um tub. Damn it, God. Oh dear God. Bunk drunk ass ended up having to be carted off to goddamn um McNulty's house in this big ass pink bathrobe. Cause his monkey ass is drunk as hell and can't go home like that. So McNulty was like, How the fuck was you gonna go home if you burned all your damn clothes? Which was a good question. And it goes off from there with, you know, with Buck telling McNulty, you know, everybody around you and everything you touch always goes to shit, which is pretty much true. And that was the whole episode, y'all. I am so thoroughly enjoying these retro reviews, y'all. I hope y'all enjoy it with me. Thank you for taking this ride. I really want to get y'all comments on this whole race thing with McNulty versus Daniels and McNulty versus Rawls. Because I got people who say I'm delusional, but I don't know. I y'all you know, know I'm always good for a good aga, aga. So I'll see y'all in the comment section. Until next time, that's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.